Okay, we're on the JAMA test bench here. Going to take a look at this Mortal Kombat 2 PCB board set. Uh, this was sent to me by a friend who picked this up and it is not working properly. He's got two bad game ROMs and the soundboard does not work. So I'm going to take a look at it and see what I can diagnose. Upon initial inspection, when I turn the system on, it's got a bad... Well, you'll hear the test tone from the soundboard does not come on. There's no test tone and the LED does not light up. And it is all hooked up correctly. Ribbon cable is set up for, you know, pin 1 to pin 1 and all that stuff. And there was a broken header pin on pin 19 of the mainboard ribbon cable connection. Pin 19 was broken. I replaced that already before I even did anything. Uh, but as you can see here, UG12 and U12 on the memory expansion board are bad, are coming up red. So I'll acknowledge that. And you can see the game does run here. But there's no sound or anything like that. If I start the game, you can see I go down here and got uh, graphics problems on some of the characters here. So those realms are definitely bad and there's no sound. So the first step is to replace those two ROMs, the UG12 and U12. I'll change those out and we'll see if that makes a difference. And then I'll go from there. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to reflow the solder to the amplifier here on the heat... Uh, it's on the back side of the heat sink here. The amplifier for the actual soundboard is located under here. I'm going to reflow on there because the uh, little stanchion here that keeps this from moving is missing. It was actually broken during shipment and you'll see the one over here, the stanchion here that keeps this from moving is also missing. Both of those were broken during shipping so I don't have any spares on those. So because this moves I'm going to reflow the header pins on the sound amp and I'll test it out first uh, and see what that does and also I'm going to remove all the sound ROMs and check the ROMs in MAME because if U2 sound ROM does not work or if the U2 sound ROM is bad it won't read any of the other ones. So a lot of times I've come across these quote-unquote bad sound boards and U2 was the culprit and by replacing U2 with a good version of it or a reburned or non-broken version however you want to refer to it by replacing U2 with a good known ROM the board boots right up. So that's the first one I'm going to test. I'm going to take U2 off and test it in the burner against the file in MAME and see that if it's good. If it's good I'll put it back and I'll have to figure out what else is wrong if it's bad, I'll go ahead and replace it, and we'll see uh, what that does. So first things first, I'm going to replace those two bad ROMs, UG12 and, U and U12, and I'll check U2 here against the files in MAME, and I'll reflow the header pins on the sound amplifier. So let me get all that done, and I'll cut back here, and we'll see how successful it was. Okay, back. I have found that the two ROMs, the UG12 and the U12 ROM on the main board, were in fact bad. I checked them in the ROM reader against the files in MAME and they did not correspond. So I took a couple of spare ROMs I had, erased them, reburned them with the correct info, and I installed them and we'll see how they work. So hopefully that'll fix that issue with the graphics problems and the ROMs being bad and we can move on to the soundboard. Now I did notice something on the soundboard when I was readjusting and reflowing the pins for the sound amp and checking everything else out. I found that the clock crystal actually had a bad solder connection. There's two pins for the clock crystal. This gray thing right there. Uh, there's two pins that go down through and go through the solder pads of course. Well the solder pad that's on the back side here closest to the ribbon cable here this back solder pad was actually not broken but the solder had kind of popped off and the pin that goes through and is supposed to be soldered to the the pad was not making contact with the solder so I reflowed that along with the sound amp and I did find that the U2 was actually bad. I took the U2 out and put it in the ROM reader just like the other ROMs and it did not correspond to the file in MAME so hopefully that was the issue. I have a couple of spare sound boards I keep for parts on hand and I robbed a U2 out of one of those boards and put it in here. I did check it first of course, it does check good so hopefully that U2 being bad in combination with that clock crystal leg not being soldered correctly hopefully that issue or one of those two issues fixed the board. I haven't tested it yet because I want you guys to experience the knowledge with me so that basically is it. I replaced the two ROMs that were checking bad on here. I replaced the bad U2 sound ROM on the soundboard and reflowed that bad connection here on the clock crystal. So let's turn it on and see if we're successful. Hey, there's the test tone. There's the LED that was not lit up before. 
it doesn't necessarily, it's a, a good step here in the right direction, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work because you can have the test tone come on and the light come on and still not have it function. So we'll see here. Hey, look at that. UG12 and U12 are green. So, all right, looks like we are two out of three. Uh, I'll say three out of three if the soundboard functions. Yeah, all right, there's the track sounds. And look at that. So now it's time to make sure we don't have any graphics problems. Let's go down. All right. Doesn't appear to be any graphics issues. So okay. okay. Looks like it's all good. Round or fight. All right. So successful repair. Turns out that we had a bad connection on the clock crystal and a bad sound ROM and two bad game ROMs. So there you have it. Um, happy this turned out good and I will go ahead and get this uh, all cleaned up and boxed up and back to the person that sent it to me to repair so thanks for watching and see you next time